Okay, so when it comes to adult resuscitation, in adult resuscitation, you are not going to have a penguin sucker like we had in neonatal resuscitation, but rather you are going to have a suctioning machine. The reason is because a penguin sucker can not work in an adult because the nostrils are longer and, and secretions may be deeper into the airway. That's why you use a suctioning machine for adult resuscitation. So when it comes to adult resuscitation, as usual, you are going to have a penguin, I mean, you are going to have an adult ambubag. Then apart from an adult ambubag, like I've said, you are also going to have a suctioning machine. You need to have a stethoscope as well. Then apart from that, as usual, you are going to have a patient. So when a patient collapses, the first thing that you need to do is place them on a flat, hard surface. Then if the patient is in a seated position, like the way I'm seated, again, you need to drop them and put them in supine position on a flat surface. And there are, there are certain beds that you can use for adult resuscitation. The surface needs to be hard because you need to give chest compressions. Therefore, you need a hard surface where there is no depression between the patient's body, meaning you will end up doing nothing. So as usual, when you read the scenario to say maybe Mr. X uh, collapsed uh, and he lost consciousness suddenly as the physician on duty have been tasked to perform adult resuscitation. As usual, for any emergency condition, you don't do it alone. Therefore, you are going to shout for help. You are going to say, help, the patient is uh, has collapsed or the patient is unconscious. Immediately you sanitize and don't in gloves, then immediately you don't in gloves, you are going to turn on the suctioning machine and then you are going to start suctioning by pushing in the, the, the suctioning tube starting from the nostrils. So as you suction, you need to clamp uh, the, 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 the suctioning tube because if you don't clamp it, it's hard, it is impossible for you to press it in because of the sucking so it will be sticking on the walls of the of the epithelium or the skin so you need to clamp it if there's secretions in the nostrils you can take it in the nostril suction then you also come to the other side you suction but most in adults you find that you need to go through the mouth all the way to the airway because the suctioning may be deeper in the airway so you are going to clamp it place taking the tube and then once you are inside the air you let go of the tube then the machine suctions then apart from that you are going to rinse it in some fluid so that you clear the tube again you go in you clamp it you suction until the air is clear then you can drop the suctioning tube then at this point you are now going to get the adult ambubag and tilt the adult's head to the back like that. Then you even place the ambu bag as usual from the bridge of the nose all the way to the chin. And then you make a seal as well and position the head nicely. So you give in the two inflation breaths to see whether there's good rising and falling of the chest. Then from there, you're going to give in about 16 to 20 inflation breaths in a minute. So you push in with force in an adult and make sure you give about 16 to 20 inflation breaths in a minute. The reason is because an adult's respiration is within those ranges. Either some books will say 16 to 20 or 18 to 22 breaths per minute. So you give in those inflation breaths one two three four five sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty so after you give in 20 inflation breaths you are now going to assess the patient to see and mention the indication that show that the patient is resuscitated so you are going to say okay now there's good rising and falling of the chest the patient is no longer uh, bluish, uh, meaning there is no cyanosis and oxygen is reaching the peripheral body tissue and the patient is becoming more active. Then you get the stethoscope and feel for the apical pulse again. So for adults, you are going to use the bigger knob of the uh, stethoscope. Then you place it on the apical pulse and count to say, okay, I'm able to count about 72 uh, breaths uh, uh, 
uh, beats per minute, which is the, the, the pulse for an adult. Remember, it's around 60 to 90 beats per minute. So mention anything within those ranges. So once you mention this, you are going to say my examiner, now the patient is resuscitated. But if the scenario says perform as well cardiopulmonary resuscitation, meaning at this point, after you give the inflation breaths and the patient still is unconscious, not yet awake, you are going to move on to chest compressions. So again, here you are going to call for an assistant. You are going to say, I'm asking for an assistant and the assistant will come, will hold the ambu bag nicely for you. So the assistant is going to be giving in uh, uh, three inflation breaths. When they give three, three inflation breaths, you are going to give in five chest compressions. So you are going to come here and in an adult, you are going to make a fist like this one and fold your hands like that. Uh, let your dominant hand be on top and then your less dominant hand should be down there. Then you are going to place the hands on the z 4 sternum of an adult and you are going to be giving in at least five chest compressions. Make sure your hands are not bending in, the, in this manner or your knees should also not bend in, the, in that manner. So you need to stand and apply the pressure of your body without bending your hands or your knees. So you go in one, two, three, four, five. Then they give two inflation breaths in this manner. And then apart from that, again, you go in one, two, three, four, five. You give two inflation breaths until you are able to do five cycles of full chest compressions with the inflation breaths. Then you can reassess the patient. If the patient is still not awake, you are going to continue with chest compression and at least be able to give sikiste to nainte chest compressions in one minute. So you need to be extra fast where you're able to give at least more than sikiste to nainte between 60 to 90 chest compressions in one minute. After you do that, then you are going to reassess the patient and say, okay, now there's good rising and falling of the chest. The patient is no longer bluish and the patient is becoming more active. Then you even get the stethoscope and then check for the apical pulse and mention to say the apical pulse is above, uh, is above uh, 60 breath, uh, beats per minute. So you say maybe 72 or uh, 68 beats per minute and this is normal. Then at that point you are going to say thank you so much for allowing me to do the procedure. I'll document and report the findings. It means you are done. You are even going to sanitize because now the patient is resuscitated. So again for adult cardiopulmonary resuscitation it would depend on how the station is set whether you are just going to give breaths or you move on until you give chest compressions. So mainly the examiner may guide you when you do the first part they will tell you to say proceed with the chest compressions or they will tell you to say your patient is not resuscitated. So what do you do if the patient is not resuscitated? You don't continue with the same but you move on to chest compressions. It's like you are proposing a lady and as you propose this lady the first time maybe you just buy her chocolate and uh, some gifts you go to her place propose she refuses the next time take her out to, to a mall or to a nice restaurant and propose from there so you, you try to go the other way to see whether this patient is going to accept or, i mean this girlfriend of yours or this person you love is going to accept or not so it's the same thing with resuscitation. Start with the first one. If it fails, move to the chest compressions. If the chest compression fails as usual, but the patient is still breathing minimally, you are going to give oxygen. And in an adult, you get the white tubing, place it, and you regulate between three to five liters in a minute. And at that point, you just say, I'll reassess the patient after five minutes, and I'll document and report the uh, the findings then apart from that you just uh, sanitize and your procedure is uh, done so that is about adult resuscitation but in actual practice you continue performing chest compression uh, for another 10 minutes because you cannot pronounce the person as dead just under 
10 minutes so you may even continue doing this chest uh, compressions for more than 10 minutes sometimes even for about 20 minutes uh, but in 20 minutes if the patient can't breathe uh, you will pronounce them as brain dead and there's nothing that you can do you just uh, pronounce the patient as dead but during OSC because it's limited uh, the scenario will guide you as well as the examiner may guide you at which point you're going to end but this is all that you need to know about adult resuscitation